Uh, so yeah, uh, I'm Miles Johnson. Um, I'm a designer originally from the United States. Uh, now I'm living and working here in London. And today I'm going to talk to you about designing for humans and how we go about balancing our business goals versus our design ethics when we're building products. Um, so we're all familiar with this uh, moment when you're on a social service um, and you want to delete it and you just can't figure out how to delete your account. So you have to Google, follow a tutorial, it just, it's, it's pretty miraculous. Um, and we have to wonder, like, how do we get here? And that may be because the metrics that Instagram's using to define their value comes with number of users. So designers are influenced to say, oh, we need to make this a bit difficult. Um, maybe we can convince them to deactivate their account, but then we still get to keep that number in our metrics, and we can still say we have these millions and millions of users. Um, but it's not all doom and gloom. There are some companies out there, like for instance, this is Hinge, uh, which is a dating application. I don't know if it's in the UK, but it's in the US. Um, and uh, what they did is take, some, take a step back and actually rethink what does success mean for their users. And as a dating application, success, success would mean that two people um, met and they no longer need the dating application. So by taking time to rethink those metrics uh, of measuring the success, it gives the designers a more freedom to design something that users are going to actually want to use. So I'd like to take you through my process of how I ask myself uh, these questions and face these challenges. So here's the scenario. This is literally the Trello board that I'm working on <laughs> as we speak. Um, so if you're not familiar with Trello, it's basically a project management tool. Um, and the way we work uh, is we have our discussions, next up, work in progress, code review, acceptance, staging, production uh, over there. Yeah, it's also poorly redacted. <laughs> um, but basically, my whole day is spent grabbing cards from next up, putting them in progress, um, doing the design, doing the front-end implementation, sending it to code review, put the PR up, get it reviewed, you know, maybe make a change. So it's quite uh, an intensive process, um, but it's really nice because we focus uh, working with user stories. So for instance, a user can log in and we take that story from the discussion and idea and we send it all the way to production. Now, the negative here is that we don't get a holistic view as designers or developers into what we're building. So there's never time to step back and think about it. Um, and what can that outcome look like? Well, the outcome can sometimes be something like this, where the user story is a user can opt out of receiving emails from us. And the designer takes it all the way through, compartmentalizing it, and we end up with this, where we can see we have um, an unsubscribe from all emails button that's actually in quite low contrast. So someone that is maybe visually impaired uh, might not even be able to see this button. Um, and that's all because the designer is influenced thinking, well, we don't want anyone to leave uh, our service. We don't want them to stop receiving our emails. Um, you can see that also by how we have the tick boxes where it's, well, maybe we can keep them just receiving one email per week. Maybe we can just have them receive one email per month. You know, what can we do to keep them there? And what we don't want to do is trap them by giving them, you know, this impossible scenario. Another thing to think about is as a designer, um, you may also be the one that designed the email. So if your boss is thinking like, you designed this email and now people are unsubscribing from it, um, it's a really difficult place to be as a designer where now you, you really personally, not just business goals, but personally you don't want people to unsubscribe because um, it could affect your job status. So how do we face this? Uh, sorry, <laughs> we have to ask ourselves the question, is this right? Um, and this comes in three ways. Is this right for stakeholders, the people that are putting up the money and the time um, and have the business plan? Um, is this right for us as designers or developers? So in, from a design point of view, what I can speak to is, you know, is the layout right? Is the visual design right? Have I designed an experience where a user can get from you know, point A to point Z? Um, and finally, and most importantly, we ask, is this right for users? Um, because if it's right for the stakeholders and you know, we do the demo and the dev and I give a high five and the stakeholders are high fiving and it's amazing um, and then the product gets shipped and users don't want to use it, then the whole thing fails. So that's a really key thing to ask. 
Um, and the way I do this is through self-reflection and what I call the grandma test. Um, this is my grandmother, me, uh, my sister, and that's me uh, <laughs> thinking about my grandmother. Um, and you can do this test, you don't need to use your grandmother. Um, for me, my grandma was someone that was a great moral compass when I was a kid. Um, so you can just think of someone, a friend, a family member that you feel has you know, a good level head on their shoulders and take that user story that you brought all the way to the end and explain it to them. You know, in your head, not out loud, preferably. Um, but explain it to them and say, you know, I designed uh, this uh, opt out for email and I did this, I did this, I did this. And just by explaining it in your head, it forces you to think about what did you just do? Why did you do it? What influenced you to make that decision? And that's how you're gonna know when sometimes you need to go back and take that thing from, uh, from you know, code review and bring it back to discussions and ideas and think, hold on a second, this user story might not be right or maybe the way I implemented it is not right. Um, so. If you do that, hopefully as a designer, you'll spend a lot less time focused on just moving cards across Trello and more time advocating for the user, which I think is the most powerful thing we can do as designers. Um, and thus, you'll be able to design for humans. So the last thing I want to mention is, uh, I didn't say at the beginning, I'm a designer at ThoughtBot here in London. Uh, and I want to mention two cool things. Um, well, three cool things. The first cool thing is we build uh, digital products for mostly small, medium-sized businesses. Um, and we have uh, six offices, uh, five in the US and one here in London. Um, the second thing would be we are hiring developers and designers. So if anyone is interested, um, come and chat with me afterwards. And finally, my favorite thing um, at ThoughtBot is we do mentoring sessions. Um, and these mentoring sessions are quite cool because I feel like when we're doing them, we're learning as much as the mentees. So it's a really nice back and forth. Um, and you can come meet with a designer, a developer. You can come talk uh, business models, plans. You can you know, just come have a chat and explain you know, what you want to do next in your career. It's a really friendly atmosphere. And we do that every Friday. Uh, and you can just book that online. Um, yeah. Uh, and you can find my information. I only have Instagram. Thanks.